Welcome back. It's 9 p.m. and Act 3 has begun. And we found Wilbur here in the library. No? Well, let's look at him first. Wilbur seems to be very interested in that magazine, which we've seen before. Ah, so you're Lillian's friend Laura, is it? You look very nice, Laura. Very nice indeed. Dirty old man. Okay. Um, that seems to be the same conversation as before. Let's tell him about Gertie, though. Oh no, I'd better go check on that. She's not there. Why do we keep telling people that? Short time later. You're crazy, girl. Gertie's not there. I know. Oh well, let's just ask him stuff. This whole place isn't so bad. You get used to it after a while. Uh, I guess he uh, comes here often, considering he's the personal physician of the Colonel. Speaking of whom. Just between you and me as Henri's physician, I can tell you that he's not as sick as he lets on. I think we'll see him around for many more years yet. I have a feeling the rest of the family isn't going to like that. I've seen Lillian here occasionally over the years. I get the feeling she doesn't like me, though. She does seem very to be very protective of her Uncle Henri. Yeah, I'm getting that feeling, too. And on that note, Colonel and Henri. I don't have anything else to say about that. Oh, and I didn't ask about that yet. That was weird. I guess there's nothing to say about that. Ethel, then. I don't know Ethel very well. She doesn't come around here too often. I've seen her daughter here on occasion, though. Ethel and Lillian? I don't know either of them well, but I do know that Henri has had quite a time with them both. How about Gloria? I did help her one with a little problem once, but I shouldn't talk about that. You probably have already said too much by saying that. I guess Gloria was right to be worried about you. I don't know what I did to cause it, but for some reason Rudy has it out for me. Rudy seems to have it out for everyone, so wouldn't worry about it too much. How about brother and sister? Personally, I think Gloria's too tied to her brother and her mother. Well, you can stop worrying about the mother part now. How about Clarence, your partner in crime? Clarence can be a bit gruff at times, and he sometimes gets himself into situations, but he's really not a bad fellow when he's not stealing money from the Colonel together with you. Do you know anything about uh, Gloria and Clarence's relationship? We probably shouldn't talk about them. Okay. How about what Ethel and uh, Clarence? Clarence wanted to buy land, and he was probably doing that to pay off those uh, gambling debts that r from that racehorse scam. What about it? But he doesn't know anything about it either. Nobody seems to know anything about it. Um, we are talking to Wilbur, so that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'm sure I'll make that mistake more often than that. What about Gertie? I don't know much about Gertrude. Not that it matters. She's dead. Clarence and Gertie were talking to each other, though. I don't know that Clarence doesn't like her at all. Well, she is current. Uh, he is currently the prime suspect, considering what he talked to her about. But well, it doesn't explain the hanky. Hmm. I don't make, pay much attention to the butler. She is an attractive girl, don't you think? I I guess so. Some of these answers are actually the same as before. How about the Colonel and Fifi's relationship? If I had the chance, I'd go for her too. Well, you're not rich enough. Rudy was trying it, though. I may not approve of Rudy, but I can't blame the man. How about Salee? What do you know about her? I think Salee is the best cook in the whole South. 
Well, at least uh, somebody has a nice opinion about someone. How about uh, the friendship between Celia and Lillian? I think I've heard that Lillian and Celia are close. Does seem like it from the way they were talking. Too bad we couldn't spy on that. How about Beauregard? What difference does it make? Okay, he doesn't want to talk about the dog. Do you know who the hanky belongs to? Doesn't look familiar to me. Ask Ethel about it. Well, Ethel has so far been stone drunk every time we saw her, so that has not been possible. Oh well. If you don't want to listen to us about Gertie, nobody seems to believe us. Um, since it's Act 4, let's go to the um, parlor to give um, Polly another cookie, cracker, whatever, and I want to use the door in the secret passage. Hey, there's something on the floor. Someone has left an old cane behind. Who here uses a cane? Okay. It's a cane. The only one I could think of maybe the colonel? Can he walk at all? I don't think so. I want to go through the door on the right, so that means I have to save... In case I get randomly killed again. Hmm. Ethel's not here anymore. The secret panel closes behind you and leaves no trace. Well, let's give another cracker to the parrot. You give a cracker to the parrot. He's after me! Ark! So afraid! If he's talking about the killer, that would suggest a female killer. That would mean not Clarence. Unless he's talking about someone else. I mean, everybody's after someone around here, so... Although... Ethel didn't particularly like Gertie. Didn't think she deserved any money. And we did see Ethel's hanky, so maybe it was Ethel after all. Hmm. Um... I kind of uh, want to use some more of the doors. Wait, this wouldn't work, would it? Because the because I think you have to use all of them to uh, if you want to get full sc score. But I think Wilbur's still there, so oh no, apparently he's not. The secret panel closes behind you and leaves no trace. Something looks wrong here. A chair has been knocked over, and there are signs of a struggle on the floor. Wilbur's gone! What happened here? A fireplace poker has been dropped on the library floor. You see some small pink feathers scattered upon the floor. Oh no! What has happened? Let's get the poker. Poker? I don't even know her. As you retrieve the fireplace poker, your eyes happen to fall upon some small pink feathers scattered upon the floor. We already saw those. It's a poker. Um, let's look at the feathers. You wonder how the small pink feathers got on the floor. They look like they may have come from a pillow. Or a feather boa. Gloria wears a pink feather boa. Did Gloria attack Wilbur because she was afraid that um, he was going to reveal her secret? And anyway, what happened to Wilbur? I mean, his chair's been pushed over, but besides that, we don't know anything yet. Although, considering the theme of this game, I think we can guess. A 
chair has been knocked askew. The magazine is on the table now. You read the name of the magazine. It's called The Racehorse Quarterly. Upon examining the open page, you see a picture of a beautiful thoroughbred named Sunny Boy. The name Sunny Boy has been circled in red. Aha! Uh -huh, so that's the racehorse that uh, Wilbur and Clarence were involved with. I guess this is another uh, case where Clarence could be a suspect, if we disregard the feathers for now. Because Clarence was afraid Wilbur was going to tell the Colonel about the money they stole. But then again, the parrot was hinting at a female. So it could be Gloria. Or unless the parrot was talking about something else. You'd never really know, now do you? Can we read the magazine beyond that? No. Um, I'm just saving because this is something I don't think I've ever tried, any for, tried before. Let's poke the fire. Okay. I'm being too clever, apparently. Let's see if we can uh, find Wilbur, see what happened to him. He's not in the study. Maybe he's outside. And we found Gertie's body outside. Not here, though. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to uh, venture somewhat further afield. Let's just keep heading west. You've come upon a ramshackle little playhouse. Hanging from a nearby tree, you see an old rope sh swing. Seeing these long-ago playthings make you wonder about the children who used to live here. It must have been a long time ago. This is an old playhouse that some long-ago children played in. There's puddles everywhere. Mud puddles dotting the wet ground remain from an earlier, earlier rainstorm, which we can still see in the distance, actually. Oh, there's a squirrel. You see nothing special. I guess it's not on... not visible. Maybe I need to look at it when it's actually on screen. Um, and a swing. A charming old swing hangs from a nearby oak. Maybe Wilbur's in the playhouse. It could happen! You're inside a leaky old playhouse. Lillian is in the playhouse, along with some dolls, by the looks of it. And that passes another 15 minutes, apparently. And then he said... Lillian's playing with dolls. This is a bit odd. Your friend seems to be reading a book to those old dolls. A book. You glance at the book in Lillian's hand and see that it is an old fairy tale entitled Bluebeard. Is that a fairy tale? Like a poster or something on the wall. Or is that a doll sitting in a chair? Or possibly both. Oh. And I seem to be missing all of the keys I was trying to hit. Look carefully at the walls around you, but see nothing special about them. Um, game? So she stuck the key in the lock, and apparently I'm not allowed to look at the dolls. The ceiling seems a, a bit leaky, but apparently nothing of interest. Let's talk to Lillian. Huh? What are you doing in here, Laura? Uh, I'm kind of busy right now. I have to finish the story. Okay, I'm beginning to see why other people think Lillian is not right in the head. Hush, Laura, you're interrupting us. Lillian has retreated into her book again. She doesn't answer you. And I think we can't ask her either. It would appear that Lillian is more interested in reading a book to some old dolls than talking to you. It would probably be best to leave her alone right now. Ah, oh, some friend she's turning out to be. No sign of Wilbur, though. There's a squirrel again. You have frightened off a little squirrel. Oh, did I do that? How? 
Let's use the swing. Gingerly, you sit in the swing. Oops. How embarrassing! Oh, looks like Ethel's out for a moonlight stroll. Ethel must ne need the cool night air to help clear her head. Or is she just wandering mindlessly? Mindlessly. Probably the latter. Ick! Oh, back so soon, Laura! Hi, Laura! Who's your friend? Oh, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> nice music. Okay. Ethel is even more drunk than before. The uh, night air doesn't really seem to be helping much. Okay, um, let's keep heading west. On the west corner of the island, you see an old, dilapidated stable. Surrounded by an empty corral. Oh, it's you again. There's only one stall in this old stable. As there is an old, broken-down nag in the stall, you deduce this must be Blaze. That is kind of an old horse, yeah. Blaze must have once been a beautiful stallion. But now, with many passing years, he has been reduced to an old, broken-down nag. You guess that he must be the colonel's horse. Um, let's see, there's a saddle here. You see an old saddle hanging on the wall, as well as a bridle. That must be Blaze's old bridle. Can we get any of that? The saddle is very heavy. Besides, you've never been fond of horseback riding. How about the bridle? Bridle. The bridle doesn't belong to you. Besides, you've never been fond of horseback riding. Um, fun little joke you can do here. This isn't King's Quest 4! That wasn't a horse, that was a unicorn. Another thing you can do... Open the gate. You're a dead ringer, Laura. With pluses for eyes. Actually, come to think of it, it's, it's not that's, uh, that strange to think that Gertie died of an accident, considering how easy it is to get killed on this estate. <laughs> Anyway, we're not getting in uh, Blaze's pen, it seems. Which is kind of a shame, because there's a lamp behind him. A lantern hangs from the wall inside the stall. And this is an adventure game, so you always want to have lamps. Anyway, no sign of Wilbur. Um, looks like we can't get any further from here. In the west corner of the island, you see an old dilapidated stable surrounded by an empty corral. The corral? An empty corral surrounds the old stable. That's um, kind of the same thing as we said, as was heard before. Can't go any further west, though, so let's go south. You're at the southwest edge of the Bayou Island. The old road and fence have been overtaken by the rising swamp water. Misty bayou water surround this old plantation, cutting it off from the rest of the world. Better watch your step around here. Yeah, game's not wrong about that. Have you ever had that sinking feeling? Indeed! I guess we can give her a pass because it's a... Um, a swamp? Still counts as super drowning powers to me. There's an owl. The owl is on his nightly rodent patrol. He pays little attention to you. Are there fireflies or something? Fireflies flit erratically while other unseen insects pierce the night air with their calls. Ooh, fireflies, I know this puzzle. We have to collect them and use them to light a dark passage. No, wait, wrong game. 
<laughs> FL, stop following me! That storm isn't getting any friendlier. Vestiges of a passing storm still edge the night sky. Let's go this way to get away from that music. You have come upon a run-down run carriage house. Old crates have been piled before one of the doors. For obvious reasons, it has not been used as a carriage house for some time. Um, because nobody rides carriages around here anymore, I guess. How about those crates? A couple of old crates are piled in front of the carriage house. Can we open those? Probably not from here. They're just old crates. There's nothing of interest inside them. There's no point walking over there either. You find enough another squirrel by the looks of it. You've come upon a run-down carriage house. Old crates have been piled before one of the doors. Um, this is the same description we got when we got here. Let's go inside. You peer through the gloom of the old carriage house. Parts of a decrepit carriage lie in the right corner, and a small rowboat named Minnow rests in the left corner. Let's look at the boat. There's a small rowboat named Minnow in the left corner. Anything in the boat? You look in the small rowboat, but do not see anything of interest. There's an anchor. An old anchor hangs on the wall. As well as a... Um, life preserver. You see a life preserver on the wall. Can we get those? I'm guessing that anchor might be a bit heavy to carry around. You have no use for an anchor. You have no use for a life preserver. There's no way for you to take the rowboat. Also, you have no use for a rowboat. I guess. Oh, right, look, the oars are up here. You can't see any oars. Oh, <laughs> just like in Space Quest 4. You can't actually see those, you just think you can. Um, look, table. Then, there's an oil can on the table. Ooh. Okay. Wow, we can actually take that. Now we have an oil can. Um, and there's a carriage. You see parts of an old carriage in the right corner. Yeah, it's not entirely complete. Somebody seems to have taken the wheels. Anything in it? You look inside the decrepit carriage and find a crowbar. Thinking it might come in handy, you take it with you. That could come in handy. Is there a rope on the wall? Apparently we can't get that. You see old boxes here and there. There's nothing you would want in any of the boxes. Good thing that Laura knows that without actually having to open them. Damn, where could Wilbur be? He's probably inside, isn't he? Well, I guess we're gonna have to uh, see if we can find him in the next video.